When Mr Carter, he's our teacher, said we would be going on a social studies trip from Auckland to live with a Maori tribe on an island, we could hardly believe it. Motiti Island. I didn't even know where it was, but Janet got out her atlas and found it. Fourteen miles off the coast of Tauranga. Gee, fancy sleepy in a meeting house. Forty of us, just like they used to in the old days. Mr Carter gave out some notices about it to take home, but I couldn't wait to tell Mum all about it myself. We are going to live with the Maori children, learn about life on the island and see how they get their food. This will mean that we will land on the western side of the Mr. island. Mr Carter called all the parents and class together for a meeting on the very next Wednesday and he explained all about the island and what our class would learn from such a trip. We had all been divided into groups, each one in charge of some part of the planning. He told the parents about the meetings we have in class and everybody reports on what they have been doing. The island supplying all the food? Yes, they have told us that they will be. Are there any questions? Do we have knives and forks or do we eat with our fingers? No, we eat with our toes. <laughs> we'll be using knives and forks. Has the transport group written to the Benici Motors yet? Yes, we have. They haven't replied yet. Yeah, probably couldn't read their writing. <laughs> the finance group was all right, though. They told us that they had been up to the bank and the teller had shown them how to operate a class account. Three of their signatures to every cheque. The transport group really started to work on the morning we left. The driver had to work hard to keep ahead of them. At last we were ready to leave. We were too excited to say goodbye properly, so most of us just waved out the window. As soon as we got on our way, Mr Carter began to talk to us through the bus loudspeaker and we all got out our study sheets. There was lots to see and as we travelled south we made notes and talked about the places that we passed, such as the Mary Mary power station, which is steam turbines to generate the electricity. In between times, Ross got out his ukulele. We were at Tauranga almost before we knew it. Jonesy, the launch skipper, said it would take us three hours to get to Motiti, so we left immediately to be across before it got dark. He let me steer some of the way. It was beauty fun. <laughs> After we landed, we went straight to the Marae where the real Taiha challenge was given. <laughs> we all got a bit scared, and I think Mark was too, but he walked slowly forward to pick up the branch to show that we had come in peace. Then one of the elders welcomed us to the island on behalf of the Nanti Patawai tribe to which they all belonged. He looked very fierce and grand in his cloak. Then we went forward and met the people and shook hands with everybody outside the meeting house. Then it was time for tea. Hangi cooked on hot steaming stones in the ground. It looked good when they opened it up. Angela wasn't sure if she liked it. But we soon got used to it, and now we all think that the hangy's food's the best you can get.
and after tea it was time for bed in a real meeting house. We started learning about the island the very next morning when we went over to the little schoolhouse for lessons with our new friends. Mr Carriker, the teacher, told us how they used to be cut off from the mainland for days in bad weather until the post office gave them a new radio telephone which has funny looking masts. Then they took us all to see the main crop on the island, which is maize. We went by taxi, by titty taxi. They have hundreds and hundreds of acres of maize which stretch away as far as you can see. They sow and harvest with big machines and sell a crop on the mainland. Everywhere we went we made notes and drawings of what we saw so that we can make a proper report when we get back. Virginia made a sketch of the village layout while we looked at the carvings on the meeting house. All the carvings have a meaning. Some of them tell legends about the island and of battles fought in the past. P-A-T-U-W-A-I. Remember that. Patuai means striking the water. Many years ago, our tribe tricked some attackers by making them follow our canoes out to sea. Then, suddenly they turned on the pursuers, swapping their canoes, beat them senseless. We get crayfish whenever we can. We call them Kora. The sea has always been a good friend of the Maori people and we often go fishing. Joe, my brother, was back with a Kora only a few minutes after he dived in. Margaret took it from him and showed it to my friends. Every evening we all went riding on our horses. We never used saddles, but everyone soon learnt to stay on, even though they had never ridden a horse before. Sometimes we had a race. Everyone would come to watch, like they do when we play baseball. Nobody knows who wins, but it doesn't matter because it's all lots of fun. And then suddenly it was Friday and time to go home. We were told that if we jumped on the sacred rock of Motiti, it would bring bad weather and we might have to stay on the island. We all jumped as hard as we could. But the magic didn't seem to work. So we tried again. And we thought we had failed. But just as we were packing up, it started to rain. And Mr. August laughed and said that a storm was coming and the magic was working. But we must have left our jumping until too late. Well, there was still time for us to leave the island. The boys and girls have promised that they will come and stay with us in Auckland very soon.
A lot of people from the park came down to see us off. The Motiti people have been very kind to us. I know that we will never forget them.